Hi, my name is Pat Pirelli, and one time I was in Australia, and I heard about their legendary horseman. His name was Kel Jeffrey, and he had something called the, the Jeffrey Method. In case you haven't heard of it, the Jeffrey Method is a method where you take a wild horse, and by using approach and retreat, and a special rope called the Jeffrey Rope, you get them tamed in a very short period of time. Well, he was already passed by the time I got there, but Mr. Jeffrey, one of the most unique things about him was that he was in his 60s before he got his first horse. He had some kind of a um, lung disease and he needed to get out of the humid uh, part of the country, and I guess he was a journalist or something like that, and he went out back and he went on this uh, station, which is what they call a ranch. He went on this station and he just went there just to, for his health and stuff. And so he was going to chop wood and stuff like that. And he says, is there anything else I can do? All the ringers, or cowboys, that they call them ringers, all the ringers were ready to head out for four or five days and uh, go muster the cattle, which means gather the cattle. And he, was, he said, you know, I'll, I'll chop some wood and do this and do that and cook some stuff. Is there anything else I can do? They said, yeah, you can tame those horses in that pen over there while we're gone. And they were all five, six-year-old wild brumbies, you know. They were all ha, 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 and this old feeble old man. Five days later, when they came back, he had all the wood chopped, he had all the whatever the chores done he was supposed to do, and he had all the horses in the corral tamed. True story. So I wanted to learn about this Jeffrey Method, and when I got an opportunity, I got an opportunity with a, an older gentleman named Morris Wright, who was an original student of Kel Jeffrey's, and he was still trying to keep this tradition alive. And so I said, tell me what the secret is. He says, well, the secret is to be really subtle and smooth and approach and retreat. I said, well, I got to see this. He says, well, I'm glad you said that because he says, I keep a, a herd of, of wild brumbies on the Wangwabinda station. And he says, you come out to my station. He says, I'll show you how it's done. So we get there. <clears throat> they run one of these horses in and they had a this 22-foot rope, and they, they wrapped it around a stick, and this horse was in a small corral. Actually, it was only about 12 by 12. It was a real small area, and he was on a horse, and he got it over the horse's neck really quickly, got rid of his horse, and his assistant opened the gate and got rid of the horse. And he started, and this just had a noose around the horse's neck, but it had a ring on it. And so <clears throat> he started giving these little tugs, and every time the horse would leave, like he'd tug it and, and make it look at him. He'd tug it, and every time the horse would leave, he'd tug it and get him to look at him. Pretty soon, he'd, he could draw the horse, and it would, took very little. And this, this man was in his 80s, and he, he was uh, a big, strong man, but, you know, but he was old and, and pretty fragile. And so anyway, so uh, I was really impressed. So then he taught me how to do it, and then we brought in. I was there for a week. Matter of fact, Dr. Miller was with me. And... Um, we were just blown away. So he started showing me all this, this stuff, and he couldn't wait to share this. And he had, had schools and stuff like that, but it was something that was just, even wild horses were something that were a rarity, but he did not want this to die. Well, he had this 22-foot ring rope, he called it, and it was made out of something, it's rawhide, it's not completely done like we do it rawhide here in, in the United States. So it was a real rough kind of a thing. And there was a real strong belief that this <clears throat> ring rope was was the important tool. So I sat there and I, I got myself one and, and it kind of stunk and it didn't feel very good and stuff like that. And I thought, those 12 foot lead ropes that I make out of the yachting braid, when I get home, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make myself a ring rope. So sure enough, I got back and again, I've been in the uh, wild horse taming business and the horse behavior business now for three and a half decades. And I started coming home, and I couldn't wait to put that ring rope. So I made me not only one, but two, but three. But I started pretty soon. All of my instructors and all my students, all my protégés, we were using these 22-foot long ring ropes. And, I, and all of a sudden, we started to realize, because it was made out of yachting braid, we could allow that ring rope to drift through our hands. As the horse let out, we could drift, let him drift. And some of the more wild horses or the tougher horses, man, that thing really started to work. Then I started realizing, wait a minute. You know, horses are great judges of distance and approach, so I've been teaching him with this 12-foot this training rope, and we all know that giving him more distance gave some horses more comfort or more feeling of security, and I started getting faster results, so I started using this 12, the 22-foot the, the ring rope. 
And on the ring rope, we had this ring, and then we had a carbiner snap, and we'd snap it on the halter, and it, man, amazing results. So pretty soon all my students had the 12-foot training rope, and they had the 22-foot ring rope. And then I realized, wait a minute, you know, I only use the ring rope every once in a while for the tame, you know, the, the wild horses. So I came up with, well, why not just put a snap on it? Because I'm going to say 98% of the time, I use this on the end of my halter with my horse. So by allowing the horse to drift further and being able to um, allow him and give him more room, and then pretty soon it expanded to where I even now use a 45-foot rope. Now that rope, being 45-foot long, this is too heavy for that, and I'll tell you about the 45-foot rope later. But this all of a sudden started being one of my number one training tools. Yes, and if I still need a ring rope, I can either A, just take the snap off by taking this undone here. It's kind of a hondo in. I can just open that up like that. And I, I could take the snap off if I just run that all the way out. And I can use it like a ring rope, or I can actually put a, use the same thing and take one of those round rings and put it in there. The secret with horses, there's a couple of them. One of them is put pressure on really slowly and take it away quickly, give it back to them quickly, and that's what the ring does. The other is, is to allow them to drift and teeter. In other words, if a horse gets a little unconfident, he needs to drift away from you, and then he needs to teeter. And the third one is, is to be able to get his respect from different distances, from up close, from a medium distance, like 12 feet, then tw twice that, and we all know two times 12 is 22. And then, of course, if you can get it from twice that, two times 22 is 45, so you can get it from 45 foot. Now you can see I, with my math skills that I've got that uh, my expertise came from, uh, I went to Giddy Up University. So I'm sure that was probably in somewhere like Gallup, New Mexico. But anyway, another story. So the reason that I developed this 22 foot rope was so I could work with everything from a wild horse all the way to have, giving my own personal horse more room, therefore more fun and faster development.